Hi. Dealing with nonlinear contact has always been a challenge for most of the users, not only because it is difficult to solve for, but, uh, but also because it requires a lot of manipulation of various settings in order to get it to work. This might be frustrating and difficult at the same time. In this series of video, we will try to introduce the most common settings for nonlinear contacts that will fit most of the general cases. Of course, there will be cases that require different measures and settings, but the idea behind these videos is as there are many settings available and each one has multiple options, this introduces a large number of possible combinations. This on its uh, own can get very confusing as to where do we start from. We will try to explain in general discussion format the logic behind making the preferred settings uh, selection without digging too deep in the math or the software programming involved in the background. There are a total of nine videos, few minutes each, and we recommend that you watch them in the order of their release number. So let's get started. The first thing when we set a contact is to choose the contact and target uh, uh, faces. Uh, what that means is one part will be the contact side and the other part will be the target side. In ANSYS, the contact is uh, usually uh, marked with the red color. The target side is marked with the blue color. Now, there is uh, uh, there is always the question: How is there a difference between what goes on target and what goes on contact side? Yes, of course there is a difference, and there are some general guidelines for what to sh what to choose uh, on on each side of of the contact pair. Uh, so, uh, in generally speaking, you have to keep in mind that. Uh, when we have a, uh, um, two bodies, one of them is a contact, one of them is a target, usually the way contact detection works is the contact will go towards the target. That's how the simulation or the mathematical uh, model is working. So you know, it's always working by detecting the movement of the contact toward the target, not the opposite. So the monitor is being the monitors for the movement or for the, uh, the, the, the motion is on the contact side. Uh, and as you can see here on the, uh, on, on this schematic uh, at, the, uh, at the bottom of the screen, it shows two samples of, uh, of, of what the difference will be if we switch the contact and the target. So on, the, uh, on this example here on the left, once the the contact uh, uh, points are within the target range, contact will be detected. However, if we switch, the fact that target mo movement is not going to be detected, so it will go all the way until this location until we start picking up some contact detection, and that's why it's uh, that that's that's an example of how important it is to assign the contact and target. So what are the general guidelines? The first rule is if you have a, a, a convex surface coming in contact with a flat or concave surface, then the flat or concave will be the target. The second rule was regarding the mesh size. If we have a big difference in mesh size between the two objects, then the, uh, the coarser mesh should be on the target body. If we have a difference in the stiffness between the two bodies, uh, uh, that means one part is softer than the other, then the stiffer part should be the target. If we have difference in the uh, element order, uh, which means uh, one part is high order elements, another part is low order element, in this case the low order element should be the target. And finally, if we have a difference in geometry size, that means uh, we have a very small part and we have a very big part, then in this case, uh, the larger surface should be the target.